Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to be telling you seven things you should know before going over to Poland. Today in this video I'm going to be telling you basically some travel tips and maybe some hacks, things like that. Basically I'm giving this list to my younger self what I wish I would have known before going over to Poland. So without further ado, let's just get started. All right, so in this list, I'm gonna be giving you guys some basics along with maybe some other tricks and tips that I kind of learned along the way. So that's why some of these are gonna be like, you know, somewhat of no brainers to some people. Some of them, you're gonna learn something. And then other things you may have not have really realized or thought of. So without further ado, let's just get started. And that is number one with PLN or Zwati. That is their currency. All right, so if you pay with your Euros, they're actually not going to accept that at all so what I do is I actually got a credit card and this is a capital one credit card in the US I don't know if you're coming from Canada or you know Great Britain or wherever and you're going to Poland I don't know what you know your credit card situation is going to be like but I actually got a credit card and with this credit card I can pay for a purchase in Poland and it won't take out any fee for you know another currency so when i go in poland i just simply pay with that card anywhere i go and on there i can see the translation from usd to pln and it's pretty simple and straightforward and what's really nice is that they don't take anything out of my own account like any interest or you know any extra fees for switching to a different currency and so when i get back from my trip i basically will just go and just simply pay off the entire card from there and you know this will help my credit but also i really just hate the word credit cards i just you know i just think of debt and people really messing up with credit cards and i already have student loans that i've been trying to pay off so yeah, but I mean, this is the most straightforward and easiest thing to do. You don't have to go to some scam, you know, counter exchange place and you know, where they're going to take out a big chunk of your own money. And yeah, so if you really don't have to go to a currency exchange, like especially in the airports or anywhere in, you know, any capital city, not even just talking about traveling to Poland. I mean, definitely think of possibly getting a card out where you can just pay in any currency and it's not going to charge you anymore. So that's the first travel hack here is figure out what you're going to do money wise when you go over to Poland and look into debit cards or credit cards that could possibly just pay right there in Polish currency and it's not going to have any translation issues at all. So just look into that. But also with that, there's probably going to be some areas or situations that you're going to encounter that actually just take cash. This could be some taxi cabs and, you know, maybe some smaller businesses or things like that. For example, this entire tattoo sleeve took cash only and I actually didn't know this at all. So I was going to all of these ATMs. I was trying to withdraw cash. Yeah. And I mean, it basically just turned into this crazy situation where I was trying to run around to all these different ATMs and it just wasn't working. And it basically got to the point where I had to ask my tattoo artist, hey, can I just send you PayPal money? And um, he didn't have PayPal himself, but actually like his boss did. So I sent his boss money and I even added on like a little bit more too, just for the situation itself and all the trouble. And so, yeah, I mean, you know, some situations you're going to have to have cash in before and, you know, maybe figure that out on your own. But yeah, I mean, maybe just hold a little bit of cash in your pocket just in case for some situations. So I know this has been a long point so far, but I'm still going with it. And I wanted to say that if you're coming from the West, like the US, Canada, Great Britain, wherever from the West and you're coming to the East, you know, typically it's cheaper. So um, I'm just saying that with Poland, it's it's you know, most things aren't really I wouldn't say like are completely cheap and, and you know, it's not like that. You know this isn't a third world country or something like that but most things are a lot more affordable in poland than in the states for example so i just wanted to throw that out there like you're not going to break your wallet going to poland it's really affordable and for me that's such a great experience because then i know i don't have to basically destroy my wallet you know traveling around the country so i just wanted to throw that out there it's pretty affordable so the second point here is getting around poland which can be pretty easy if you know what you're doing so that is what I'm going to teach you right now. So what you can do right now is go to a website called yakoyade.pl and also this app is in English. So it has all of the bus routes on there so you can get to anywhere you're going, you know, within a city or area, you know, region that's, you know, close to a city. So basically on the app, you can basically tell it where you are right now, where you want to go, and it's going to show you the exact bus routes to go to. You know, if you're asking you, well, how am I going to read, you know, which bus it is? Well, they are, they're all numbered, so you don't have to worry about reading the Polish language or anything like that. They're all numbered. And when you get on, you can either pay for a ticket there. I know there are little kiosks in the buses are in English and you don't have to talk to the bus driver at all. 
So you can basically just insert your coins and pay for a ticket there. And that's also really, really affordable. So you can either pay for a ticket on the kiosk in the bus, or you can pay for it in the app itself. And really, I mean, I've never had issues with the uh, like ticket counters, you know, so there's there's like a team or a group of people that will come on the bus from every single door so you can't run off and they'll go up to people and make sure that they have their tickets. I've had it happen once out of all the time I've been in Poland on the bus, which has been quite a lot. And so, I mean, if you don't have a ticket on the bus, you might be able to get away with it. But if you get caught, you're going to be paying a fine. So just remember that. So another thing is that students get a pretty big discount in Poland itself. And this is also with transportation. Like most bus rides, you can get like half off the price with a student ID. I know this is going to sound completely unethical saying this, but I actually have a student ID card from when I went to college. Okay. And you can use this in Poland because no one in Poland is going to know exactly, you know, what university it is. You know, they're just going to see your ID and then they can't really prove anything. So they're going to give you half off. And I know I sound completely immoral saying this, but you can get like half off tickets from bus rides to movie theaters. I mean, there's honestly a pretty big list. So yeah, if you still have a student ID card laying around, I would use it and take it to anywhere in Europe. And you're probably going to be pretty good with getting half off prices. So yeah, I think the pronunciation is Yakuye but I think there's also just an app. I don't think it's just the website. I think you can download an app as well. I've only just used the website itself, but I'm sure the app has a pretty good interface because I know the website definitely does. Like they keep it updated. It's definitely a clean website. So speaking about getting around, you can actually download this app called Bolt and it's basically like a taxi service to get around. It's similar to Uber, but I know that they were having some issues in the country of banning Uber and like these different third party taxi websites and you know, know things like that but bolt is a pretty good one because it's pretty cheap and basically you know if you want to get around the city or town you can use this app because it's pretty common in Poland and maybe you're saying huh well I don't know any Polish and I don't know how to talk to the taxi cab rider so we're gonna get in point number three and that is learning a little bit of the language I highly recommend before going over to Poland to learn like basic basic phrases you know hello good day dzień dobry you know sorry przepraszam. Uh, I don't know, like, thank you, Jinkuya, or, you know, different terms like that, or please, Prosha. I mean, just learn those basic terms. And also from there, download the app, Google Translate, and then go on, select Polish and download the entire language. So if you download the language and you don't have service in the country, you're going to be good to go because when you go up to the taxi cab or, you know, whatever person you're talking to and you want to say something, you can basically just write a text in the app or even use your voice and talk into it. And then from there, it's going to automatically translate it. There's even a conversation mode. There's a voice mode. There's a handwriting mode. And then also a cool feature that a lot of people I think don't know about is the camera feature on the app. So basically you can just open the camera feature and then it's going to start scanning for Polish words. So this feature is actually pretty useful because let's just say you take it out and you're at the grocery store and you take out the camera part of the app then you can basically go up to any item and scan it and you're going to get the full translation from there. If you want to look at the ingredients of any product or thing like that, or if you want to look at the signs on the road, all of that, you can basically just scan it and it will translate it right there in front of you. So it's really handy, really helpful. If you really don't know anything and you're kind of stuck with the language, I highly recommend downloading Google Translate. And also going along with that, if you're having some trouble learning the language, then you can go to my other two videos that I've made on learning Polish. And I plan to do another one at some point, but for now you can check out those two videos and you know, there's going to be some tips and tricks along with that. All right. So we have currency travel and learning the language. Now point four is basically going to be about where you're going to stay. And for this, I highly recommend Airbnb. And why is that? Well, this isn't just a hotel experience. This is like you're being in the country, you're living where other people live, and you're going to experience Poland in another dimension. So I think this is really just a crucial part of staying in really any other country. If you really want to learn like, you know, what the locals do and all that, I highly recommend at least staying in an Airbnb. It's always been super simple for me. I've never had any issues. And there's been a couple times where I've booked an entire apartment or even a house and I haven't been able to even say a word to the person that was there. We basically just handed the keys and like we were good to go. I mean, that's that's really it. So you don't have to worry a whole lot about the whole booking experience because 
it's all it's all pretty straightforward and it's really easy and it's also really affordable and with airbnb it's in virtually every single city in town in poland like you're not gonna have any trouble trying to find a spot to stay for the night airbnb always has your back and also if you're a first time user of airbnb you can use my link in the description below it'll give you some money off your first purchase and i really wouldn't talk about something that i haven't used before and i've used airbnb a lot in poland and i've had just nothing but success with it so I highly recommend checking it out and checking out that link in the description below. All right, so in speaking about staying places, please don't just go to Krakow, okay? There's so much more in Poland. I mean, not even just Krakow or even Warsaw for that matter or Krakow or Warsaw. That's how it's actually pronounced in Polish. But anyways, please don't just go to those places. Like there's so much more in Poland to see. And honestly, I'm just gonna say this outright and I'm gonna get hate for this, but I think Krakow is kind of overrated. I think there's a lot of cool things to do like, you know, seeing the castle or paying respect to Auschwitz and things like that but I really think that it's kind of overrated and there's just so many tourists in Krakow I kind of just didn't like it really because of that reason it was just overcrowded for me and I don't just recommend going to all the cool tourist spots like Gdańsk, uh, Malbrook, uh, Castle or Warsaw or Lublin or you know Zakopane or you know just Katowice or Krakow and I don't just recommend going to all those places I highly recommend going to all of these small towns and villages they're honestly really neat and I went to a couple going to Poland and I had such a fun time there because there was no tourists you're like you feel like you're actually living in the country and experiencing what it's like day to day and I feel like it was just such a cool thing for me to do and see and really just experience you know every little small town is a little bit different as well like their customs or their food and yeah i mean it's just pretty interesting so i highly recommend also checking out the small towns and also i wanted to say i'm going to be going to wrocław at some point in time it is on my list and it is something i want to go to i've talked to a couple people that live in wrocław and i would love to visit i think it would be so cool it looks awesome and i definitely definitely want to experience it myself all right so number six on this list is trying the food now this is kind of going on my last point like i said in a lot of different small towns or cities the food is a little bit different in some places so i just highly recommend trying all of the food i mean i'm not just talking about pierogies okay i love them myself but there's so much other stuff to eat and try and even drink in poland i mean my god i feel like the options are honestly kind of endless there's so many different polish foods to try that are really unique and i can't even even talk about all of them in fact i was thinking about making another video just kind of dedicated to polish food so for a quick example i think the soup is called barszt which is like a beet soup and i think it even has like these little dumplings in it as well and sometimes they're filled with a filling or something like that but it's mainly beet soup it doesn't really look too appealing but it's really good and it's also really filling as well because of the dumplings but yeah that and also my girlfriend's dad had some alcohol that was made i think like in the woods or something like that it was called beanber and it was really strong and I actually kind of liked it in the weirdest way possible but yeah I mean that was just a quick example of some of the stuff that's really interesting that like we wouldn't have here in the states and that I haven't tried at least here in the states but yeah like I said I just highly recommend trying the food out it's not gonna be spicy or anything like that but it's gonna have different and weird flavors and it's gonna be combinations before that you haven't thought of as well and also if you're in someone's house and they hand you food eat it okay just eat it out of respect at least if you don't even like it just eat it i mean it's extremely extremely disrespectful in poland and i think obviously in most countries if you don't eat someone's food it's kind of a sign of disrespect but yeah this is no issue for me because i love eating all the food in any home i go to so it's never been an issue for me just eat it anyways out of the respect for the hospitality and food anyways from the host all right so the last and final point on my list here today is meeting the people all right so don't just go to poland and hang around with people you know who you traveled with or from your own country like let's just say you get on meetup.com and then you're just hanging out with americans in poland just don't just do that because number one you're limiting yourself from learning the culture and the language itself and learning like more about the people and you know the awesome culture of poland so yeah i mean go to poland meet the people and you're gonna be surprised at how awesome polish people are i'm telling you because on the outside they kind of seem you know a little bit distant 
and you know like they're not going to open up or something like that for example in some of my other videos that i've made i've talked about how you know they won't say how are you doing or you know hi you know as you walk down the street it's not like you're in the south of the states and you know people are kind of open and friendly it's not like that in poland but once you find that a polish person opens up you're gonna find that they're some of the friendliest nicest people out there and the hospitality of polish people is like the highest i've ever experienced in my life and i kind of compare that to when i went to ecuador and i was staying in ecuador for a little while and you know the people there were pretty nice and you know they were giving us meals and all of that but i feel like polish people compared to ecuadorians for example go above and beyond when it comes to hospitality like the first time i ever stayed in a house in poland i felt the utmost hospitality i've ever felt in my life and ever since then i was just immediately drawn to the country and i've just loved it honestly since so you may ask yourself like how are you going to meet a polish person and honestly this is kind of a difficult situation because it's it's kind of different from me because like I know my girlfriend and then from there that kind of opened up friend group and also just being here on YouTube you know having this like kind of Polish American community like I can just talk to people and I met a lot of cool people from here so uh, this would be kind of difficult but honestly if you can just meet one friend and then maybe if they're kind of extroverted you can meet their other friends and hang out with them or maybe you're kind of extroverted then I guess I would just say go out and you know go to different restaurants or bars or areas like that and just try meeting and and maybe talking to people and you're gonna be surprised at how they open up and how great a Polish friendship is all right guys so that was seven things you should know before going over to Poland and also a little bit of travel hacks along with that if you think I missed something maybe leave it in the comment section down below and maybe I'll make another video about this with some other points as well but that's it for today guys so I want to thank you for watching Jinkui, Dobitzenio.